Okay, so welcome to video four. Video four is the implementation of activity two that we've just introduced. So we're going to start by making sure we've got design views for each table with appropriate um, data types and fields. So we're going to start with artist. Now this is the uh, actual view. Now what I'm not going to do in this video is type in all of the records, um, but that will be required for testing. So that will be making sure that these things come in. But there's no point doing that until you've put the validation techniques in, which we're going to do now. So design view is at the top left. And so what we should be seeing here is either auto number or number. Now be careful with auto number because as we've seen from the, and we've, we've recognized today, that it might be as better, uh, well served to make sure that that's set as number but make sure that is done so pre-relationships, uh, but it's okay as auto number. We should have short text and short text for the initial. For gallery, what we should have is, again, in design view, we should have uh, either number or auto number for gallery ID. We should have short text for gallery because it's the name, and we should have number for gallery type ID. For exhibition, again, in design view, we should have exhibition ID, which should be either number or auto number. Number of days should be number. Artist ID should be number because it's related to artist, which is either auto number or number. Gallery ID, number. Exhibition start date should be date time. And predicted sales should be currency. And finally, we have gallery type. Again, we go to design view. We should have either number or auto number and short text making sure that the primary key is present in each case. And those are, and we would screenshot each of these four individually, this top half to ensure that we met that criteria. Now, as we move on, we know that we've got to show uh, all these elements down here. So we're going to start with presence check. And presence check says an artist will not save without the artist's surname present. So we're going to go straight to the artist table, which we've got here, and an artist surname. So we're going to click on the artist surname field, and we're going to go down to uh, this um, field property or the field properties below. Now, we're going to use validation rule. Okay, we're going to use the validation rule uh, to ensure this. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can say required and make sure it's set as yes. That's one way of doing it. That's a, a one way of doing presence check. Now, remember, there's lots of different ways we can solve these validations. But I'm going to show you the way it's listed in the mark scheme. So it is not null. Now, the beauty of having a validation rule is that we can have validation text, which is something that pops up in the event that we break the rule. Um, So we say is not null, which says in the event that we leave this field blank, display the following error message. Now, it doesn't say in the uh, guidance here that it should be displaying an error message. And that's why we could also go down here to required and set it to yes. So that would now suffice as a presence check. Now we're going to look at length and format check next. And again, we're going to stay in the artist table. Now we're staying in the artist table because we know that a an artist's uh, initial must be in the correct format. So we're going to look at the initial uh, field here. Now as a length check, we know that we can look at the field size. Now, we already set in video two the field size to one. And the input mask we're going to specify here has got to be greater than L, which means that an L means the letter that you're adding in must be a capitalized letter. OK, so it must be a capitalized letter. Um, so what we've got now, again, we would screenshot this and we would label it accordingly, a length check, and we'd highlight this. And the format check would we use for input mask. So 
we've got now presence check, we've got length check, and we've got uh, a format check. Okay. Now what we haven't done is table lookup and uh, value lookup yet, or a range check. So for range check, we're going to look at our uh, table again, and it says a record will not save if the number of days is below the accepted range, and it will not save if it's above the accepted range. So these two points are going to help us meet our range check. Now we know that the number of days exists in the exhibition table, so we're going to go to our number of days uh, field. We know it's set as number, and again, we're going to use a validation rule. Uh, this time, we can quite simply use the between uh, command verb or keyword here. Sorry, not command verb. And we're going to use the word and. So between uh, three and ten. Now, providing that's all working correctly, we should get a capital A on and. And again, if you're using validation rule, we've got to put a validation text in there. Valid number of days must be at least three and no more than 10. Now, be careful here because sometimes uh, it, it will throw that, but we can test it if you're unsure. Go into your design view, uh, table view, um, and number of days. Let's try entering three. It accepts it. Let's accept 10. It accepts it. Let's try 11. And we get our error message here. Okay. And if we get stuck, we press escape. I'm going to come out of that. Go back to design view. So now we screenshot our field properties. We've done a range check. The last thing we've got to do is a table lookup. And again, we're given direction from the awarding body of where this must be. A record will not save if a gallery is assigned an invalid gallery type. And a gallery, a record will not save if the exhibition is for an invalid artist. Now we could use this for any foreign key, but it's important that you do this for the things that it specifies here. If it's in this list, then you must do it. Now, again, we're going to go to exhibition because we are uh, a record or not saved if the gallery is assigned an invalid, uh, sorry, an exhibition is uh, assigned an invalid artist. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to artist, yep, which we know is number. And I'm going to come down to the field properties and I'm going to go to look up. I'm going to change it to a combo box. And by doing so, I'm going to get a, uh, uh, some options down the bottom. Now, where the, this row source says table or query means it's where is it going to pick up the data from? Well, I'm going to use row source down here and find the table. Now, if I'm looking for an artist, I'm looking for artist there. And what that should do is pull through the artist ID that's already related in the artist table. Again, if in doubt, go to design view, uh, sorry, data sheet view. And this time when I go to this, it's already opened by somebody else. So let's just close it. This time uh, it's because I've got to reopen it again. My apologies. I've got no artists in there, but when I put the artist in, this drop down box will display all the artists in the artist table. Now it's blank at the minute because they aren't in there, but that, what I would do here is screenshot the lookup value for artist ID and I'd get this. Now, to ensure we complete the steps here, it said a gallery cannot be assigned an invalid gallery type. So I'd go to the gallery table. And I'd do exactly the same thing. I'd go to gallery type ID, look up, change it to combo box, and select this time gallery type. And that would be saved. And again, what I would do is screenshot this lookup section within my uh, example here. And that should get you the activity to full points. But what we can do here is we can check the guidance for activity two. I'm just going to pull this across. Um, it says activity two, TBL should be used for table. 
Fields should be consistent, either have spaces or not. So make sure you are consistent with your naming conventions throughout. ID fields may not match the rest of the fields, but must be consistent with each other. If standard naming conventions are used for tables, but our fields are not consistent, you can only get band three for trait one. So each of these is worth effectively two points. Um, for trait two, you must make sure that everything that you've produced in activity one matches here. Now, if you've created the table structures in activity one, it shouldn't matter. Make sure the data types, as we've just gone through, match. OK. And in trait four, you must make sure you meet the checks that we've just been through. And that will give you a, a total of eight points. Now, for those first two activities, that's 16 out of 40. That's nearly 50 percent of the marks. And we've not done anything particularly taxing yet. We've not been doing anything particularly uh, difficult yet that should have stretched anybody. We've not used any queries. We've not um, used any particular um, uh, difficult formatting, etc. So we want to be looking at getting full points if we can for the first hour and a half of your exam. And I'll stop it there and then we'll look at activity three.